one board member, um, Daniel Bonet, on uh, joining us via Zoom. We can't see him. Daniel, you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? <laughs> wow. Okay, so he's here, omnipresent. Mm. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for joining. Um, he's he is unwell today, but but he wanted to be here. Um, so we made it happen. And thanks, everyone. COVID got me. So we're but we're all good here. So down with COVID. Down with COVID. So it's not gone. Um, we have the attendance sheet is going around. Good. We have it circular with me. Great. Um, good. So we're gonna get started with the best part, which is Rhiannon's oath of office. Like really talk into it. Thank you. Let's get started, Rhiannon. So, um, and where shall we stand? Where shall uh, Whitney and Rhiannon and others stand in order for you to? Would it be over? Okay. We want that part of the meeting. The board, all Do you need us? We could okay. all okay. join. Um, I can hold it and I will pass it to Rihanna. Can you, is this good for hearing wise? Good. Rihanna, congratulations. Um, please repeat after me. This is the special oath. Lucille did this last year, and this is the um, the oath that uh, that makes it official. I, Rihanna Navin. I, Rihanna Navin. Sorry for mispronouncing your name, Navin. Uh, do solemnly swear that I will support. Do solemnly swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Board of Library Trustees. Of the Office of Board of Library Trustees. For a term to expire June 30th, 2027. <laughs> For a term to expire June 20th, 2020, 30th, 2027. In New Rochelle, New York, according to the best of my ability. In New Rochelle, New York, to the best of my ability. Excellent. Thank you. And now we have to sign these documents. Great. <laughs> no, thank you, everybody. Thank you and welcome, Rian. And we're getting we're getting uh, right to work tonight. So, um, first things first, we will review. Please, if you didn't already, review the minutes from last month's meeting, and we will approve those. I'll make a motion to approve minutes. Good. Has anyone everyone had a chance to review? Yes. yes. Good. Corey, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, great. Um, the minutes have been approved. Thank you. And we will move on to our regular business, beginning with the WLS report. And Francis, thank you. Okay, uh, let me begin by again thanking uh, and congratulating Rihanna on your appointment. And to congratulate the, the voters as well for electing you <laughs> unanimously. And I have to say that I, I was an electoral uh, inspector when you were elected. I want to assure you that I didn't tamper with the electoral process <laughs> in, in any way. Um, 
the um, WLS board is in recess now until uh, September. You guys are working throughout, but we, we took a little break until, until September. Uh, so there's really no serious uh, issue to report. Only two things. One is that uh, I've circulated the strategic plan, which I hope you've had time to, to look at. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I just forgot to circulate the executive director's report for last month. It's, it's longer than usual, very comprehensive, and it covers a lot of activities that WFS has been doing, including some activities of the libraries and so on. So I'm going to do that as soon as I, I, I get home. Um, uh, the, Francis, I have that report. I can circulate it on behalf of you to the board. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Like that. Oh, oh, that's excellent, right. Thank you. Uh, one issue came up uh, just before we adjourned, uh, the issue of the banning the books. It has not been discussed by the board as such, but it was raised by the uh, executive committee. We discussed it briefly, and it is an issue that uh, we, we need to uh, address um, as it's becoming more and more of an issue, not only here, but around the country. And we are going to be facing that pretty soon. And uh, to my delight, I see that uh, the director circulated an article in the New York Times about rising books, bans, librarians have become to attack. I think it was a very good article, and it gives you uh, an overview of. Uh, of the issue we have to face. So we are not going to just be tackling this by following the traditional way of saying, okay, it is a constitutional right to everybody to have free information and so on. I think it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, so we should be ready to, to tackle it. So, so that came up in the board, uh, in the executive committee board, and we discussed it. And I think we're going to be referring it to the, the full board for a discussion. Uh, to, to see how we approach it. Uh, that, that's about all. Uh, as I say, the board is in recess, so there's not very much to report. And congratulations again, Rihanna. Thank you, Francis. Um, next is the president's report. That's me. I have two points. One is um, we will uh, make sure we hold our annual election of officers tonight. So um, that is work that is conducted by the nominating committee, which is um, selected each year. And we also want to mention that we will have our um, committees selected soon. We'll announce the committees and their members at the August board meeting. That committee work will begin as soon as uh, hopefully the end of next week when everything is finalized. But um, so the committee work will begin, but the announcement won't be made until August. Um, and so before we move on, I will call on Lucille, who is the chair of the nominating committee for this year um, to discuss officers. Thank you, Whitney. Um, after brief discussion, the nominating committee recommends that we, um, that the current, uh, that the members in their current positions, Whitney as president, Daniel as vice president, Sarah as secretary, remain in those positions for the next year. That's our recommendation. And I would make a motion if that were appropriate to do at this time. Any discussion? Any opposition? Okay, then yes, though. So. Then I make a motion that the board approve the current board chairs remaining in their existing positions. Whitney is president, Daniel is vice president, Sarah as secretary. Motion made. Can I get a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No, then um, thank you for that honor and privilege to serve in this role again for another year. Um, and um, to my fellow officers, Sarah and Daniel, um, thank you also for serving. Um, and thank you, Lucille and everybody else for discussing and uh, doing that work. I don't have anything to say, I don't think right now, but we will move on to Tom and the director's report. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Whitney. And um, I also want to offer my congratulations to our newest board member, Rhiannon. Welcome. Look forward to working with you. Again, congratulations. Um, uh, since we, do I need to speak louder? Got it. Since we reopened um, um, following the first phase of the pandemic, uh, our activity levels relative to people in the building started out quite low if people were anxious. Um, we compensated by providing um, um, online <clears throat> Uh, access to ebooks and e audio books and the New York Times and e magazines, um, and also streaming services. Uh, we also had um, a, a, a service where if people ordered material, we would uh, walk it out to their car. So, um, so all this continued, but um, our doors were open and people started to utilize the library, but the numbers have been reasonably low. In these last number of months, I've been sharing with you that our activity levels have grown. And it's really interesting. Um, since the summer arrived, we are seeing a far more pronounced a level of activity in our building relative to um, all generations. Um, adults, uh, teens have always been a, a very active um, a patron group since, uh, since the reopening of the library. And I'm happy to say that our children's spaces, both here and at the Huguenot Children's Library, are far more active, far more people um, are walking through the door and taking advantage of our services. And it's really exciting for us as a staff because um, there is a certain level of anxiety waiting for people to return. And we are indeed seeing that um, now. Um, and, I, and I'll just uh, share with you just some statistics uh, just briefly that really talk about um, our increased levels vis-a-vis -vis, uh, this summer and particularly with our children. Um, uh, as you know, we have active programs at our Maine and Huguenot Children's Library. And um, last year, we had um, uh, 67 programs at HCL with uh, 1,438 attendees. At Maine, we had 79 programs with 1,049 attendees. However, here we are just two months, uh, two weeks and a few days into a seven week uh, program. And at um, the Huguenot Children's Library, we've had 14 programs with 504 attendees. At Main Library, um, the, uh, the uh, rise in activity levels is particularly significant. We've had 24 programs with 686 attendees, which is wonderful. Um, you know, um, our summer programming is, is Im important, but um, our cornerstone is still summer reading and making certain that children are not losing you know, the levels of, of success they've gained during the school year. So we have a summer reading game and it, um, traditionally it's been very successful. Last year, it was quieter, it was less successful. Last year we saw um, in totality, both buildings, 323 um, young people um, sign up and participate. Um, um, here we are in, in the middle of July and we have, um, we have 472 kids participating. So we've exceeded last year's number. And according to our children's staff, the number still continues to grow. Kids are still coming in with their families and signing up. So that's really exciting. Um, and our adult programming is also busy um, because our library is a cooling center. It's a cool place to come. And I urge people, if they are struggling with the heat, think of the library in addition to the Hugh Doyle Center as a cooling center, please come to the library. And people are using the library for, for that reason, I hope, among other um, reasons. And ours are um, extensive. You can go to our website and, and find out about, about them. But so we are seeing in, increased levels. And that's, and that's really wonderful for us. It's inspiring to see people taking advantage of all the resources that we have here at New Rochelle Public Library. Um, I'll, I'll swing to just um, an update regarding a variety of grants. Um, as you folks know, we have two um, outstanding grants from the New York State Library Construction Grant Program. Um, usually um, by this time, we will have um, um, been, at, been informed that we received our grants and that we can expect to see them in um, August or September. Because of COVID, the delays have been significant. 
um, today at the um, at the Public Library Directors Association meeting that Francis was an attendee. Um, Terry Kirshner, the executive director, said because of the pandemic, it's been far slower. And so the Dormitory Authority, which is one of the important um, 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 group of analysis, um, um, analysis that look at all of our grants throughout the state, they're still working on it, but they do hope to complete it within the next 30 days. And then hopefully we'll be seeing um, the grant checks arrive both in our mailbox and other libraries. And as you folks might remember, we have a really significant grant for the main library over 340,000 to redo the third floor area. And of course, we have an amazing match from our foundation of 114,000. We have approximately $17,800, um, a grant at the Huguenot Children's Library to replace all the um, air conditioning units that are found in all three levels. They're over 20 years old. We're waiting on that grant too as well. Um, the other grant that we're working on um, for, for August 26th um, for each building, because we apply for grants every year, is a grant to deal with some of the acoustical issues that that we encounter here in this building. It's a lovely building with atriums and high ceilings and hard spaces. But um, there, um, when the building was open, there was no sort of <clears throat> acoustical solutions to try to cushion the noise that echoes throughout the building. And we have been working with a vendor, um, and we're hopefully we'll have. Um, a proposal that we can submit that will help us deal with this and make the library, um, I can't say it's gonna be a quiet place because we're busy, but a quieter place. Um, and the other grant application that we're working on is a grant that will be, um, will focus on the Huguenot Children's Library and there are a variety of things that need to be done. Um, storage is an issue at, H at HCL because of the age of the building. And we're working on solutions to come up with better storage for um, all the items that we have, you know, the, the materials for our programs, et cetera. Um, and also some other things that might relate to the lower level. We experienced a somewhat minor flood a few years ago that water flowed in from the lake. And um, fortunately, very little was damaged, but the, but the uh, tile floor um, survived it, but is now starting to pull up. So we're hoping that we can receive money to take care of that. And there's some exterior masonry things that we are hoping that will qualify for a grant where we sort of um, not pushing the envelope, but trying to find ways to uh, justify these grants. So that's the other grant that we're waiting on. Um, let's see, the, the, the grant that I do want to talk to you about that will require board action is the um, Main Library Fire Stopping and Safety Project Grant. And that is a grant, and I'm looking, do you have that email? I think I sent it to you and I, that's it, thanks. Um, we had applied for a grant in 2020 and, um, and it is related to um, the, fire stop of the fire stopping of the building. And um, when the building audit was, was issued in uh, February of 2020, wasn't it, Sarah? I think around that, just before the pandemic. Um, one of the major issues that the um, architect cited was the fact that our fire stopping was weak, which is an issue in regards to keeping the building safe. So we thought that was an important grant to um, pursue. And we received $61,000 from, uh, from the state through the state construction grant program. Um, the, the total project was, um, let's see, 183,000. So we had to do a match of 122,000, which the board approved um, um, in August, 2020. Now, um, since, since, the, since the inception of the project, our architects, which is a, a, a APS, Architectural Preservation Studies, Doug Emilio is one of the principals, he um, and a, a, a team of um, a technicians, along with our custodians, have been exploring the building more extensively. The initial estimate was, was in fact, an estimate. Um, Doug and his, his team and our team um, explored the building and discovered that the fire stopping problem was far more extensive than originally anticipated. Um, it's, as a matter of fact, it's tripled in terms of areas that need attention, which means, of course, um, the cost has increased. 
um, along with the fact that uh, inflation has has occurred. So, um, so we have been working with Doug, myself, and Gene Manning um, to come up with a more viable budget. Um, and it, um, and um, we do have a new budget number, which is um, on the high side, only because we just don't want to be caught short. If, um, if in fact there are more issues than even what we initially thought, and so the, the, the project is uh, now at unfortunately 276,000, and um, what we our grant is for 61,000. And we have already approved 122,000. So we need um, an additional amount of $93,000, which we can take from the um, fund balance to, to take care of this problem and make the, the building safer for our public and for our staff. And um, I'm happy to answer questions. I have documentation about it that I can share with anybody that might want to see it. I have. Um, a large two volume set that <laughs> that um, not only uh, summarizes the project, but you know, Doug and his guys and our team spent a lot of time in every single fire stopping areas characterized in here. So um, I, 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 we have not had um, very many, if any, uh, projects that have gone over to this degree, maybe smaller amounts, but um, this was when the in initial project was spec'd out it was based on their their best estimate and their explorations, but as I said, unfortunately, it was far more extensive than anyone realized. I am. Okay. Does any? Yep. Do you have questions? Discussion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Corey. Corey. Yeah. Who's the project manager? It's been uh, Doug Emilio has been working on it at the architect. But Doug's the architect. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> So Doug's the architect, he's the one who gave us the estimate or was it? The... He gave us the initial estimate and then he hired the, the team to further investigate and discover the additional. So we, we're, he's sort of functioning as the project manager too, okay. along with us. All right. With, with Rob, our lead custodian and myself and Gene. Okay. And so. <laughs> yeah. Right. The inspection is um, is a third party, uh, which will cost um, as part of that total project estimate fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. So there is someone checking. All right. So the original estimate was what? One eighty three. One eighty three, and the revise is two seventy six. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what Lucy else Corey, do you have any more questions? Yeah, I was gonna do the math real quick, but go ahead. Okay. All right. Um I had a question and I know Rhiannon had a question. Um just really quickly, Tom, is there I, I have a question about this and I have a question about the other item. I'm sorry, you could you report? I didn't hear you. I have a question about the fire stopping and the other items that you mentioned in the report, but I'll do fire stopping first. Okay. okay. Um, one, really quick, is there an executive summary yes. of those two that we have aside from the email? There's an executive summary in the board documents that we can look there, at? There absolutely is. This is the large volume. Right. There's another, there's a document that Corey has okay. and I made another one and I can forward that to you. Okay. And, and, and what we can do is if you would like to spend more time looking at the, the details, we can also defer or table the vote till next, till next month. Too. Okay. Yeah. That would be nice. just to, just to get a better sense there's of a, there's what's a, involved. There's a 16 page summary that will sort of play everything through. It's better than 300 pages. Yeah, it is. Read, so yeah. that's, that's good. That's helpful. Um, but the 300 page, if anybody needs more detail, it's here. Okay. And we also have an electronic version we can share with anybody. That's great. And what's the, you may have said this already, and so I, um, uh, my apologies for asking again, what is the, what's the timeline for um, this? The timeline has been extended for a year. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's, Gene, is it, yeah. 
It's June of 2023. To the start or to finish? To finish. To finish. Okay. When would the start date be? The start date is um, dependent upon um, the board making a decision to go I forward see. with the project. Okay. But either way, it's going to finish in June of yes. 2023. Yes. Um, all right. And then I'll, I'll wait to see the executive summary before I ask the other question, because I think it, my answer might be in there. Okay. We could. Oh, good. No, I, I mean, fire stoppage seems like one of the most essential things and tabling it seems risky, but I don't know how risky because I don't know the report. So, I, you know, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a lot of money and I, and I right. No, I, understand I it, that. we certainly want to move forward, but we also, you know, honestly, Rianne, and we also want the board to feel comfortable understanding. The well, my question, my original question, I was just res responding to what I just heard, but the original estimate just because I wasn't here and I, maybe I didn't hear you in the beginning, but what was the original estimate based on and then how did it come about that it changed? The original estimate was 183,000 and it came about by working with APS and um, um, uh, technicians to explore the building. And um, so that was their estimate of what, what the total project would cost. What we discovered was that as they went further and further investigated and really we're working towards sort of building the um, the um, construction documents because these two volumes are really the, the documents that were the CD um, yeah. well, well Doug Emilio described this almost as the CD because it lists every single area that needs um, assistance and the kind of work a solution that it needs to make it safe you know for right. for use so no, no, this is no, this is this is uh, related, not the building audit. This is just re fire the fire stopping. This is okay. the the detail for every single fire stop um, uh, um, element that needs attention. Okay. And and we have a paper copy, and, and there's also a um, electronic copy, digital copy. So, and the original was approved two years ago, but then it was delayed. The construction was delayed because of COVID. Right. Okay. Now, the estimate is off 40%, which is a big, that's big, right? So when you pay an architect or any professional to do any type of job, kind of hope to give you their best case scenario. And even his worst case scenario was 209,000. So he blew through all that. Is that because of increased? Of uh, costs in the um, materials, the cost, and labor. You know, I, yeah, you, know yeah, yeah, yeah. you being in the profession, you know, yeah. um, it, there's a combination of reasons why. And part of it is because of the cost of material and labor yeah, yeah. have changed dramatically. Um, and um, also, they have um, determined that there are far more um, problems in this building than, they, than their original survey demonstrated. Okay. <laughs> What last question? This is for both buildings? No. No, just, just the main just building. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't believe that we have any, we don't have that same situation at all at the Huguenot Children's Library. Good day. Yeah. Sorry, can I just say one thing, which is that, um, yeah, so for, I think it's important that our new members who were not here two years ago get familiar with the building audit in general, with this latest um, kind of, appendix <laughs> to you know the deep dive of the things that are the most critical and we identified those initially as being related to fire safety accessibility lighting and then the list goes on from there but those are the three most critical and the fire stopping being the most critical so i don't um i i 100 appreciate your bolstering your knowledge and please encourage you to do so and all of us should brush up on these materials so that we can vote because I don't think we should delay. I think it's been enough of a delay. And also, um, you know, we could find more, right? They could go in, they could discover even more and we have to be prepared for that. I don't know if that's built into the budget, if there's additional contingency, but I too work in the construction world right now. Prices are astronomical. I don't want to wait and have prices go up even more. I would like us to lock this in um, unless there's some reason to get another second opinion. But no. you know, my only thing is you need a project manager that understands this. 
right? Because from my experience, you know, when you have someone that's creating the estimate and also saying, hey, here's the adjustments you need to make it, you don't know, have a third party checking that person, expenses can get out of control because, you know, I can say, oh, you know what, we need this, we need, and you're in an you echo need a chamber, project manager right? that says, no, this is what we need, and that's that. Oh, yeah. You just need a project manager that says, this is what we need, and that's, this is what we need, versus the project manager kind of keeps us balanced on, you know, the outside contract con contractor versus the library and the architect. So you do need that third person just to say, hey, you know what, this is good. That's an independent third part. And that's yeah. built in there, right? That's the 14,000. Right. Right. So that's why I only know having the project. Mm -hmm. Francis? Yeah, just a casual observation. Thank this is a serious me. project. It's yeah. quite, quite uh, from the budget. This is quite a, a big project. My um, casual question is, uh, what is the risk that the library has as of now before this project begins? In other words, how urgent is this project? Not that I oppose it. Is the library at any serious risk? Um, I, you know, it's hard to answer that. I can't yeah. say that we do have um, a sprinkler system in mm -hmm. a good portion of the building, not all, all of the building. So that's um, one element that could, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, you know, react to, to a problem. But, you know, we, we felt um, once, we were, once we received the building audit document and kind of got past literally a month later, the, the pandemic happening, um, that summer is when we applied for this grant because we did feel that mm -hmm. it was um, incumbent upon us to take the steps to make to make our building um, safe as safe yeah. as possible. Yeah, okay. yeah. Good. Um, do you want to continue talking about grants, Tom? Yeah. Okay. And I um, just as a as a by the by, I will send the executive summary that I shared with Corey to all the board members, so you'll have a chance to look at it, and it will give more detail and we'll add more beat, uh, meat to the bones. And just to be clear, Tom, what Corey has right now that's just the scope of work. That's not the executive summary, correct? Well, it's actually it's it's really sort of goes through the whole process, Lucille, of of the project. It it cites the. Um, the uh, the code violations by having these issues in our building. It um, talks about what could happen if mm -hmm. these um, that that the fire stop, memorandum there. that okay. that document if right. the fire stopping, um, uh, you know the sorts of things that constitute uh, problems mm -hmm. and the the the, uh, the outcomes if we don't address them and if something so so that document is the executive summary. It is. That's all it, it really is. It's that would be great. Yep. You, I will send. I, I will send the entire um, two-volume set for you to look at. It's easy enough electronically, and I'll also pull out. Can I ask this one document. more question? I'm sorry. sure, and I'm not in the construction world. I don't know how it works at all, but because it seems like a very urgent issue, could work get started on the originally approved budget, and then while we review to extend the budget, work can get added, or does it not work that way? You know, I, I, I can't. That's a really good question you may not be in construction but i don't i don't think that's possible i mean i mean i, I could know. talk to I think Doug. we should probably just vote to okay. approve our vote or because we're not approving 
it doesn't make sense to approve an old budget when we know that it's- I don't know, I, I, but I don't know how urgent the yeah. fire issue is. I think we're is. okay so, for another so, month, but- So I would hate to say, hey, let's, let's wait and read it all. And then something happens next week and we're like, oh shit. But, but, but to be fair, <laughs> they won. <laughs> just kidding. But just to be fair, we only just got this in the beginning of July. Right. So I think we're okay, okay. for yeah, another month. Know, yeah. Two years ago, so I don't know how urgent it is. But then- things, it's fine. I yeah. think we're fine for another month without any craziness happening. Yes. yes. Um, well, um, uh, other grants that I'd, I'd like to talk about, there is the Family Foundation grant that I had shared with you folks that um, the, the uh, particular foundation has asked us not to publicize their name yet at this point, but we were, as you know, given a uh, green light to apply for the sewing program grant. We submitted it. Uh, and within a week, we were told we uh, were successful. So we will be seeing nearly $50,000 come here. That will allow us over the course of three years to create a program that will um, touch um, children, teens, and adults, in which we'll be purchasing um, sewing machines and we'll be having programs. And at some uh, point, probably in the latter second year or perhaps third year, we'll be loaning the machines out to our residents. So that grant is in. There's another grant that we're still talking about, but we're really not ready to share anything publicly at this point in time. It would be premature. Um, another set of grants that um, that um, has has um, has received quite a lot of uh, interest and publicity here in the community, particularly for the nonprofit um, uh, group, is the ARPA grants, the um, American Rescue Plan Act funding. The City of New Rochelle received um, a significant amount of money, well over $30 million in, in, in recent days. And um, a, a good portion of that money will be um, uh, dedicated towards funding grant applications from nonprofits here in New Rochelle. And there was a, a, a deadline that um, was uh, July 15th that we made. And there's another deadline for September 15th. The July 15th grant was ultimately filed by the New Rochelle Public Library Foundation, but it was in tandem with myself working with Whitney. You folks also saw the grant and that's for um, the purchase of, I'm not gonna say a bookmobile exactly, but a bookmobile like vehicle for, for our city and our residents. And we're very ex excited about it. Um, you know, a New Rochelle once had a bookmobile years and years ago. And many of the people that have been here um, go back, remember it very fondly, but you know, um, the dynamic is still important. Um, people are using bookmobiles, sometimes in the traditional sense of a vehicle that shows up with lots of books and people can borrow. But now the, the bookmobile world has really brought in to include vehicles that can travel all over the area and have not just books, but can also have um, 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 uh, uh, Wi-Fi, for people that need it. Uh, it, we, it can also contain um, technology that can be loaned, loaned out to residents. And for example, of course, through another series of grants, we have, Chrome, we have Chromebooks and Wi-Fi hotspots that can be loaned. Um, it could also provide the impetus for a program. You know, there's an awning there. It, there's a multiplicity of purposes, uh, including uh, loaning books too, as well. So, um, so we've been talking about this for a while and by coincidence, I went to the American Library Association Conference and it attended a number, a number of workshops and um, bookmobiles because of the pandemic have, uh, have become even in a more pronounced and popular state. Um, and, and for many people, I've heard testimony that during this pandemic time, bookmobiles were their lifeline, particularly in rural areas, but even in um, urban areas. And so, we're very excited about um, about this. We've worked with the foundation. Um, there was a grant submitted for $450,000 for this. And that includes not just the purchase of the vehicle, but also paying for um, insurance and fuel. Um, and um, we think a, a driver, a part-time driver as well. Though the vehicle that we're going to purchase will not require a CDL license, which is which is good. But anyway, so so that has been submitted and we're, we're waiting to hear back. But we're also um, mindful of what this grant uh, is uh, supposed to be focusing on, which is COVID in the community and equity in the community. 
And um, so therefore we're in conversations with Montefiore Hospital and with the idea that we're, we can bring in Montefiore staff to provide uh, services for our residents or workshops for our residents. They're very excited about it. And so um, that will be obviously that next um, grant uh, deadline, which is September 15th. And so that's something that we're very excited about partnering with our, um, our um, Montefiore colleagues. And we're also thinking about the possibility, we have to work through a few things of creating um, an outdoor pavilion in the area uh, known as the Children's Garden and you know have pro allow programming to take the place there for children, for teens, for adults. We discovered during last summer's pandemic when we focused our programming outside, it was, it was very appealing and attractive and it's possible given some other decisions that need to be made that we may submit a third grant. So, so that's, so that's that. Um, let's see what else. Um, there's yet another grant that we're uh, talking about. Whitney knows she was the, uh, uh, the lucky recipient of a, of a chance meeting with um, Senator Shelley Mayer. Um, and she's very interested and um, she's wonderful, a great supporter of libraries. She's interesting in helping us with a potential project. And so we have some projects that we're thinking about and the range of the grant monies is not insignificant. It, I believe it extends from um, as little, quotes, of 100,000 to possibly as much as $250,000, a, a sizable amount of money. And so we as a board need to talk about what, what that might mean and what kind of projects that we could take advantage of, but obviously with an offer like that, we, we need to um, not, we need to move, need to move forward. Um, uh, county legislative meetings are taking place uh, through the auspices of the Westchester Library System. And it's an opportunity sort of similar to what we talked about with Senator Meyer to meet with our county legislators um, and they're really amazing, both um, both on the county level um, as well as the uh, state level. And we have we have meetings coming up um, on let's see, uh, Somers Library on the twenty seventh, nine o'clock, Harrison Library on August tenth. I'm I'm going to be attending that one, and Yonkers, uh, the Will Branch on August twenty fourth. So if you folks are interested in attending, um, I can send you the link. We can register you as well. So I would know if these, are, um, if these are repeating content. So does it make sense to go to more than one or are they generally the same and they're just offering several opportunities to participate? I think generally they're the same. And my sense is uh, my decision to go to Harrison is because I'm assuming, and I'll, I'll find out from Elise Burke, I'm assuming uh, the legislators that represent us will be, you know, uh, will are in uh, Harrison is in our part of the world. And so that would be the one to go to. Certainly if we went to Croton or, or, or Yonkers, that'd be fine. We'd meet other legislators, but connecting with the legislators that we know that represent us, that have fought for us in our community, I think, you know, would be, be useful. Um, I, I attended the one in Croton on Hudson. Oh, did you, Francis? One, yes, uh, I'll, I'll be attending the, uh, the summers one, so then, then I can compare, but I've registered for all of them anyway. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, were any of our legislators at Croton, you know, from uh, represented no. us? No, I, I'm thinking it was a small group, very, very small group. I'm thinking the ones that represent us and are available don't have, a, you know, yeah. um, an obligation. We'll be in Harrison. It's, it's great to thank them thank for so. all their work. I mean, because frankly, all these state, all the, the building that we're in, the renovations that we're um, looking at are. So, so much um, part of what our legislative uh, delegation has done, um, and 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 they did it oftentimes um, over the uh, objection of the then governor, who would oftentimes um, um, fund our construction grant money at a lower level. But the legislative delegations in the assembly and the in the Senate, you know, you know, overruled you know that point of view. And thanks to that, thanks to that, those efforts. There were more money that came in statewide and also to Westchester. And because of that, we were able to get significant amounts of money. And I, you know what, I just, I'm, it's, I'm grateful because we couldn't have done a lot of what we've done without 
their their work, and, and it wasn't always easy either, I, I believe. Um, let's see, um, almost done. Um, our friends are, are continue to function very successfully. Um, as you know, donations are coming in. They need to be limited in size, just two bags. Um, and their store is open on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And our foundation, um, again, and uh, just like the Friends, a great advocacy group at the uh, their annual meeting on June 20th, they approved grants for the main library and the Huguenot Children's Library that totaled over 248,000, which is the most we've ever gotten in all of our years, you know, working with the foundation extraordinarily generous, which will allow us to make the match for the third floor renovation, continue the museum passes, you know, provide um, new services in children's, uh, new technology in teen, um, adult services, furniture, um, uh, improving the musical scores collection. Um, and at the Huguenot Children's Library, uh, it's an A to Z thing where there's programs, um, some furniture, some refurbishments of things. Um, it's just really an amazing, um, we're very lucky, and um, so I'm happy to report on on, on that. And um, um, I believe I sent you, and it's in your packets. The foundation just recently published its um, agenda for board meetings for next year. Yep, calendar. Yeah. So, so that's so that's that. I'm done. Do you want to um, share your personnel report? Yep, I do find it. Thanks for Thanks, Thanks. As you folks know, um, we're obligated to come to you and um, announce when a, an employee starts, um, the name of the employee, their salary, their start date. And um, we have four staff members, and I'm excited about all four of them, but I'm particularly excited about the first staff member that I will announce who is actually here tonight. Um, Elizabeth Joseph, who is our full-time assistant director. There she is. Um, Elizabeth started Monday and she has started, she with feet on the ground and moving and meeting people and thinking about new ways to do things, et cetera. So it's very exciting to have her here. And um, I will ask you to um, uh, make a motion along and I'll also add our another full-time person that we're thrilled to have and two part-time people at our branch library. So I'll, I'll name them all, I'll name the salaries and the start dates and then I'll ask for a, a motion in a second. Um, so um, I would like a motion from the board to um, accept the employment of Elizabeth Joseph. She is our new assistant director, full-time position. Annual salary is 110,000 and her start date was July 18th. 2022. Um, the next person. Sure. We'll make this motion. I just want to say it's so nice to see you, Elizabeth. I, I didn't recognize you without your mask on because <laughs> we you took it off. And so, yes, it's so wonderful to see you. We're really excited. Um, so that's my fangirling moment um, about your being here. And um, I guess I'll go ahead and make that motion to approve um, the acceptance of the hiring of Elizabeth Joseph at the salary and start date that Tom mentioned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thanks. Welcome, Elizabeth. Um, we have another full-time person that we're thrilled to have. She is a full-time librarian too. She's um, in the children's room here at Main Library. Her name is Ashley Marie Bressingham. Her annual salary is $67,879, and her start date was June 16th of 2022. If I could have a motion to approve um, um, Ms. Breschenham's um, employment. So moved. Good, can I get a second? All in favor? Aye, any opposed? Good, welcome to Ashley. She's um, bringing energy. Um, to this area. Her specialty is our, our tweens, and that's something that we really we, we really need um, a little more beefing up, and, and so we're excited to have her too. And um, last but not least, we have two Huguenot Children's Library part-time um, summer staff members who are um, doing a great job and working at our summer patio program that happens every day, Monday through Friday. And um, the two young people are Michaela Rogers. 
Her start date is July 11th, 2022. Her salary is $15 per hour. Um, the other um, staff member is Emma Farley. Her start date is July 11th, 2022, and also salary of $15 per hour. If I could have a motion. Make a motion to approve the two HCL part-time summer staff. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay. Wait, wait. Go ahead. I, can I ask some questions? Of course. Okay. Please. Um, so first, Tom, such a wonderful, robust report uh, and a lot of good news coming out of it. And I will second um, Whitney's welcome of Elizabeth. We're really excited to have you and look forward to working with you as you hit the ground running and I'm sure we'll do wonderful things. Thank you. Um, and then I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm excited and I, and I am having fingers crossed for the grant for the bookmobile like project as someone who grew up in the age of the riff bus reading is fundamental. I think it's, it's such an important it just addition to the services that we provide. And I think it, it extends everything that the library did during the pandemic. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this being the beginning of what will be a fleet of um, <laughs> such vehicles. I think that will really, that, that will really extend where we are on the map in terms of the work that we do. Um, I had a couple of questions and I don't want to hold this up, but uh, when you, when you were initially talking about the attendance and the uptick in the in the activities and um, and folks coming to the library, a couple of things were just coming up and and I just a general question um, that I don't want you to, to to take too much time with, but is it is it common that there is an uptick? I would think that there's an uptick during the summer. Um, yes, right. There is. Okay, I mean it, it's and, arguably our our busiest time of the year. Okay, and then the numbers that we're seeing. This year, I don't know if you've done a comparison. If there's any data that you have, I would expect that they would be higher than last year, given where we are. But I, but I wonder how it relates to the numbers of 2019, because that's really what we have to base it against in terms of how we're seeing that uptick. You did say that there, the the numbers of people visiting the library were low, but the activity levels have grown. So they haven't. So it was more of a question of like, have they come close to the numbers of? 2019, or there's still you mean significant right pre COVID? Pre COVID. No, not okay. really. I mean, um, as I said, we're seeing this um, increase that's been steady and seemingly in the summer even higher. Last summer, we certainly saw more activity, but the, the bump was far less pronounced. My sense is that once the summer is complete, mm -hmm. we could do a more um, um, uh, exhaustive, exhaustive uh, comparison, mm -hmm. and really look at where we were. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think we're quite back okay. where we are. You know, when I talk about activity levels are increased, one population I still don't see here in the library like we had seen previously, and that's our senior population. Mm -hmm. They are not, they are not feeling comfortable yet to come back. Right. You right. know, they're may be coming into the library and picking up books on hold and leaving, mm -hmm. but um, prior to the pandemic we always saw a large number of senior folks who would use the library and, and, and spend time here. Now, it's, 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 it's interesting, the demographic um, from our point of view is far, is far younger, right. which is great, mm -hmm. but you know, we really are missing the full continuum, continuum right. the of, our, of our patron right. base. And then two more questions. Um, when you were talking about the, the summer reading program and also the seven week prep, you, you talked about the number of attendees, but I but I'm not sure what the age ranges were. Is that, is that, you know, like a, kind of that's like a from, K through three? I mean, a kindergarten to, through the third grade? No, it's thing, it, or, it, it or actually, goes, the programs could be anywhere from preschool till um, sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. All right. For both summer reading both. and that's a, oh, yeah. okay. okay. And then lastly, the heating and cooling center is, is a wonderful idea. And again, another asset that the, the library provides. And you did mention that that you're you've got information on the website, but I wonder what other marketing efforts are being done to extend that because there's an assumption that people 
we'll look at the website, but they may not. So That's what, what great, else is being done? Well, the, um, this, the, the city of New Rochelle uh, mm -hmm. manages this. Kathy Gilwitt, who is the public information officer, mm -hmm. has um, started the publicity. Um, um, on a silly level, I was I do a radio show once a month with Haina, and that was I was discussing the fact that at the end of the show that it's extremely hot. People um, may be suffering if they don't have access to air conditioning, um, and I think we've done some social media about that too. Okay. So we are trying to get the the word out, mm -hmm. and um, and it it seems to be our cooling centers are just us and the Hugh Doyle, mm -hmm. and the Hugh Doyle's hours are as you know are far. Um, smaller in number right. than us. At least we're open three nights a week to eight o'clock. We're open on Saturdays midday. Yeah. Um, but it is it's a, it's an issue of concern. So I would make a suggestion that um, you send a press release to News Twelve, because to whom? send a press release to News Twelve. And what they will likely do is collect all of that information. And when there are heat waves, they can announce where the cooling centers are and put a list. And so for local residents, I think that would be really helpful. And if there are other local radio stations, that's what I would suggest. You know what? Uh, I think those are all great ideas, Lucille. And um, I'll be talking to, to uh, Lisa Itzkowitz, our marketing communications person. Because I, I think now with this prolonged heat wave, you know, many, not everybody is lucky enough to have a uh, cooling air. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Tom. We are moving on now to our committee reports. Um, we're gonna start with the budget committee, which I know doesn't have anything to report. So <laughs> we'll move on. Um, buildings and grounds, nothing, but we will soon, I think, we'll start to have some things to share in the coming months. Um, community relations, Daniel and the ether, are you able to share anything? I'm here, I'm here. I'm gonna be brief, um, <clears throat> brief, hopefully you can all hear me. And by the way, I can hear and see all of you clearly. This is like amazing tech staff that we have here at the public library. So awesome job, people. Um, so <clears throat> very brief, um, I'll start off with our BTOP Help and Learning Center. Um, a lot of things have been happening. Uh, continue to help patrons completing online applications, finding social services, setting up basic email accounts. Um, uh, there's a job search coach, Rebecca Mazin, continues to assist individuals. Uh, summer civics and citizenship, citizenship classes uh, continue with the to uh, attorneys, uh, Sonica Dixon via Zoom on, thir on Thursdays. Um, you can register via the website. Um, we continue to do um, outreach and tabling with uh, People USA Project, Hope, United Healthcare, and MVP Healthcare. Uh, Notary Public Services continue this summer on Thursdays at 5 30. Uh, one was at, uh, today, um, 5 30, and there's another one um, August 18th. Uh, summer ESL classes in person continue, continue sessions are full and, uh, and attendance is great. So fall sessions will be posted soon. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. And then from Lisa, I mean, her report is very, very extensive, but um, we had a lot of events that happened all uh, the month of June uh, from our Juneteenth to crossover coach gospel choir uh we have the we had the lincoln avenue corridor exhibit summer reading kickoff um the golden age of television um and some continued um events um chair yoga and international music which that just occurred uh international music and dance festival festival uh, coming up is Nurshell and the Arts um, and Artist Community. That's July 23rd. It's a hybrid program with local historian Larry Sheldon. Lunch and Learn pre-retirement benefit workshops. That's virtual on July 26th, presented by the Social Security Administration. Um, and the International Music and Dance Festival continues on July 26th um, with Nai Chi Chen Dance Company. Uh, the Irish Dance Company will perform our August 2nd. Middle Eastern Dance, August 9th, and the Kalpuli Culminating Performance, August 16th. 
Picnic Party in the Park continues with Magic Evan, July 28th, and Pretzel Stein, August 11th, and Fiesta with Floor, August 25th. Uh, our art gallery, New Shell Art Association, the exhibits uh, run from July and August. Um, City of New Shell CAM presentations that will run from August 22nd to August 31st. Um, and a lot of marketing, communications, relations activity, you know, tabling at the Taste of the Union Fair, which was a fantastic turnout. Um, uh, tabling at the Summer Sound Concert, July 20th. Um, Tom, I believe you spoke about this, the Suing Machine Grant. Um, the award of forty eight thousand five hundred dollars, um, and um, do 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 email marketing continues, uh, and street fair street fair planning for September eighteenth and family fair two point on October second twenty twenty two. That's all. It's a lot. Thank you, Daniel. Um, the street fair was September eighteenth. Street the, Fair, September 18th. Yes. And, family, and family Fair is Family October, Fair 2.0, October 2nd. 2nd. Thank you. Yep. Do you have anything to add, Tom? Um, I just, I thank you, Daniel, for sharing. I mean, I'm so proud of our staff. We're doing um, so much in terms of programs for all ages, as well as um, social services and outreach. It's, I think it's really important. I do want to mention one one item that Daniel mentioned, which is the family, the fall family fair. Last year we did we did that here at the library, and it was thanks to the financial support of the foundation and also lots of foundation um, board members, et cetera, as well as our staff. Uh, this year the foundation doesn't have the bandwidth to really get us involved in terms of personnel, but they are um, looking to raise money. They have a challenge grant right now. They're hoping to raise $4,000. Um, and if, I thought it was four on the, on the listing that she had, you'll look at it. Well, they're looking to raise an amount of money anywhere between three and $4,000. <laughs> and if it's successful, it's from Gannett. Um, I believe we're supposed to receive an additional $7,500, um, which will allow us to duplicate this um, fa a fall family fair, we hope, uh, which was a, um, an effort that saw, uh, we, we believe, over 1,000 people. And, you know, but, it, but the, there's a chart that says 4,000. Uh, you know, if you go to that website, I don't know, it's either three or $4,000. <laughs> there's a little inconsistency, but um, I... Because I think as of today, with 24 hours having asked, we were more than halfway to 3,000. But if it's 4,000, we're not quite halfway. We're nearly there. I mean, it's really been a very uh, amazing. So um, if, for any of you, you know, in the audience or in the ether, um, if you're interested in supporting this program, um, if you go to the foundation website, um, you know, any little bit helps because, you know, that $7,500 from Gannett will make a big difference. We can have another um, wonderful uh, family fair, pulling our families back into the library, rediscovering you know, what we do or discovering for the first time. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Community Relations Committee. Thanks, Dan, for um, speaking through your discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, Finance Committee, I don't believe has anything to report. Corey's gone. Um, Personnel Committee, Lucille? Nothing to report at this time. <laughs> Nothing to report at this time. Um, the policy committee, we don't have our chair uh, Beth here. I know Sarah's on the committee. Um, I don't think you have anything to report. We, we do have the um, product of one of our last discussions related to the conflict of interest policy. Everyone who was here, except for Corey, who we forgot to grab his signature, has signed. So we'll get everybody. Thank you for your... Um, participation in this policy. Um, we, upcoming discussions will include a DEI policy, a naming rights policy, um, and we've already tackled our conflict of interest policy. Is there anything else coming up that we'll be discussing? Um, I, 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 you know, the, the policy committee has been very active and has passed a number of things. Um, you mentioned the, the DEI, which I think is yeah, EDI, I DEI. Um, but that's something that we've been talking about for a while. And um, 
it, you know, it was again, being at the American Library Association conference, there were certain themes and, um, you know, uh, DEI or EDI was really important that an organization needs to make a commitment to those principles. And we think our library is a, is a perfect example of the sort of place where we need to embrace that and make a proactive statement. Stay tuned on that, please. Um, and last is our special projects committee. Um, I am that chair, we don't have anything to report, but again, like buildings and grounds, we will, we will have more to discuss soon. And it's in relation to implementation of our strategic plan, which is ongoing um, and was just released and um, will continue. Any points of discussion for committee reports? Nope, we're gonna move on to public discussion. Do we have any public to be heard tonight? Mm. Oh, hello, former board member. We need a, we need a uh, the mic is up there, yeah. Yes. Hello, Damon. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Director Giofino, Assistant Director Joseph, congratulations, honorable board. Uh, first, before I forget, on, on the fire safety issue, you may want to check with your um, insurance company to ensure you know, there's casualty and liability elements of that. You may get a break. They may have suggestions on what you do, and you may um, get a lower rate. Any event, gee, it's great to be back. First of all, uh, you know, I almost have an itch to look at some invoices and sign some warrants <laughs> if you have some around, when you get to do those. So obviously the main reason I'm here is to congratulate my good friend, Rihanna Navin. Uh, I'm getting on this board, well-deserved. Um, she would be a great asset as you see already today. Um, you know, Tom, and early on you mentioned and you got into it again a little bit about this being a cool place to be. And in every sense of the word, you know, this is a cool place to be. Uh, it's really, you know, as, as you know, and as those of us who served on the board really know as well, this, this is the heart and soul. This is the cultural center uh, of our community. And it's a place for full and free exchange of ideas, which I think is what, what you're talking about. I know is, is uh, in Rihanna's heart as well as, as a writer. Um, and just thank you for what you've been doing. Keep on doing it. You know, um, remember when I was here, and it's been an ongoing thing talking about developers. And when they come by, listen to what they have to say. You know, don't dismiss anything out of hand. But keep in mind, and I, you know, I wrote up a thing a few years back, um, keeping in mind, you know, uh, think, go back and think about what happened to that Donnell Library in Midtown Manhattan, and how to avoid a situation like that. Because this really, again, this is this is. Uh, the centerpiece of our community here. And I'll be watching carefully since I, I should have said at the beginning, my name is Damon Moore. I live at 10 LeCount Place, which is just across, we, we moved. Yeah, so we're just across uh, the parking lot. So I'll be here even more often. Keep an eye on you guys. So thank you. And once, once again, thank you to all of you and congratulations. Thank you, Damon. Yep. Damon, thank you. Good to see you. Oh, and you know, you know, in terms of getting your county legislator involved, you know where to find me. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else? No, then um, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Good. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All. Thank you.